Well, thank you, Tom. Um, as Tom, Tom mentioned, there have been studies that have concluded that larger amounts of sediment and phosphorus loading of surface water resources are coming from pasture land and land in other uses. Uh, these pollutants and other pollutants as well, uh, uh, such as uh, pathogenic microorganisms, may come from uh, direct manure de deposition, stream bank erosion, or sur surface runoff. While it seems reasonable to assume that such pollution may occur when grazing is improperly managed, it also seems reasonable that the amount of pollution caused by grazing is related to the uh, location, the timing, the intensity, and the length of grazing as affected by grazing management. We found in our research that uh, the percent of defecations or urinations within a given zone in a pasture relative to a stream is directly related to the percentage of time that cattle are within that zone of, of the pasture. Thus, again, if, ah, there's a direct relationship between cow distribution and distribution of, of manure and, uh, and urine. Thus, while stocking rate, in this case given uh, cow days per foot, may affect the amount of uh, pollutants <coughs> that are uh, put into a given pasture, it's the distribution of cows that will affect the uh, amounts of uh, those pollutants that either go directly into the stream or near the stream, and also uh, affect the susceptibility of those to uh, uh, transport in precipitation runoff. In pastures on five farms in southern Iowa, we found that the probabilities of cattle being within 100 feet of a stream or a pond range from uh, uh, about 1% at 0 degrees Celsius to 8% uh, at about 35 degrees Celsius on uh, one particular farm that we have listed as Farm 1. And uh, on another farm, Farm 5, they range from... Uh, 14% at 0 degrees Celsius to nearly 40% at 30 degrees Celsius on Farm 5. While attempting to determine the reasons for this variation, we found that in these pastures, the differences in distribution were not related to the percentage of tall fescue in the pastures or the shade distribution of the pastures. Rather, the most significant variable affecting cattle distribution was the percentage of pasture within feet of the stream. In other words, if cattle have little choice but to be near a stream, that's where they'll be. Um, now, in evaluating this relationship with regression, it was found that the percentage of pasture within uh, 100 feet of the stream or a pond accounted for uh, 69, uh, 41, and 39 or 36% of the variation in the percentage of cattle that were uh, near the surface water source in the spring, fall, and summer. Well, there seems to be a rather simple and obvious conclusion. I believe it is important ah, has important implications relative to research and policy. In regards to research, it implies that uh, all research investigating the use of grazing management to control non-point source pollution should be evaluated with consideration of pasture size and shape. I have on this slide the results of five studies in the literature in which off-stream water uh, was used to reduce convocation of, cat of cattle near pasture streams. In the first two studies, uh, the use of off-stream water did reduce congregation of cattle near the stream. Similarly, uh, in Georgia, off-stream water did reduce congregation of cattle near a pasture stream in one pasture, but only tended to reduce congregation in a second pasture. All these studies were conducted in pastures uh, in size of uh, 30 to uh, 55 acres, with surprisingly uh, apparent no apparent effect of 
uh, distance between the off-stream water source and the stream. Now, in a Kentucky study, uh, it was found that off-stream water and other best management practices to alter uh, uh, cattle distribution did not affect uh, congregation of cattle. But these studies were only conducted in very small pastures, thus the animals really didn't have a whole lot of choice but to be uh, near the stream. In a Carolina study, uh, off-stream water in a large pasture uh, did not affect non-point source pollution, but uh, uh, as uh, Tom pointed out, and as I'll show here in a bit, uh, non-point source pollution uh, may be related more to hydrology than cattle congregation, so it isn't necessarily a good measure of cattle congregation. In regards to regulations and policy, treatments that uh, control non-point source pollution seem likely to be most effective on small and or narrow pastures than in uh, large wide pastures. Uh, thus, again, uh, treatments that uh, uh, would be used and in, in probably would be effective here uh, wouldn't be the same treatments that you would necessarily need in this pasture. Uh, however, it certainly would be more desirable at this time to have more research to test this hypothesis uh, uh, before implementing it, but uh, certainly our data would seem to uh, uh, support uh, that conclusion. Now, to evaluate the effects of different grazing management practices on cattle distribution and non-point source pollution experiment uh, has been conducted uh, on replicated 30-acre uh, pastures uh, that are each bisected with a 463-foot uh, uh, stream reach. Using GPS collars, we found that over a two-week period, the percentage of time the cattle were in a stream ranged from 0.2% uh, uh, in September to 2.3% uh, in July, and the percentage of time that uh, cattle were within 110 feet of a stream ranged from 7% uh, in August to uh, nearly 14% uh, uh, in May when offered unrestricted access to, to the stream. Uh, as the, uh, in this particular study, the stream in the 110 foot zone represented 1% and 6.25% of the area, respectively. These values uh, do represent congregation of the cattle near, near the stream. Now, restricting stream access to a stabilized uh, stream crossing with a riparian buffer on either side of that crossing. Uh, significantly reduce the percentage of time that cattle were either in or near the stream. You can see that uh, we see values here of, of about 0.1% uh, of the time in the stream and in most months on up to about 0.7% of the time uh, in the stream in July. So certainly the animals didn't simply uh, loaf in, the, in those positions. Uh, <clears throat> Within 110 feet of the stream, the values again range from about 1% on up to about 3%. Um, so, uh, again, uh, the stabilized crossings uh, seem to be somewhat uh, effective, again, when we're uh, using the red prime buffers. Uh, similar to restricting stream... Uh, stream access with a stabilized crossing, restricting stream access by rotational stocking reduced the percentage of time that cattle were in the stream to uh, essentially uh, near, near zero percent early in the uh, season to, uh, to uh, about point, uh, uh, about point seven percent uh, in uh, July. And, uh, uh, and and uh, reduce the percentage of time that cattle within 110 feet of the stream from uh, about a half percent of the time in, in most months on up to uh, about 6% of the time in September. Uh, 
because the periods when we were measuring the cattle ah, distribution with GPS cars didn't all coincide when we had cows in the riparian paddock, I've also included the percentage of time the cattle were actually in the riparian paddock over the course of uh, the entire season, which is about 6%, or uh, about uh, uh, half of what it was in where they had unrestricted access. Of course, the percentage of time the cattle are within the riparian paddock is dependent on management of the grazing system. We never grazed our riparian paddocks for longer than four days and never allowed the forage to be shorter than four inches. We found variable responses to using off-stream water uh, sources that were a minimum of 700 feet from the pasture stream. In 2006 and 2007, we found that off-stream water significantly reduced the percentage of time the cattle were within 110 feet of the pasture stream if provided unrestricted uh, uh, stream access. However, in 2008, the presence of off-stream water did not significantly affect cattle distribution uh, in regards to the stream. We believe that the difference in response to off-stream water was caused by a large amount of precipitation that fell in 2008, resulting in a large number of uh, natural off-stream uh, sources. Uh, similarly, a uh, recent paper from Georgia demonstrated the importance of considering environmental conditions when evaluating the effects of off-stream water. These researchers found that off-stream water was effective uh, in reducing the per uh, percentage of time the cattle were within a riparian area if uh, the temperature humidity index was less than 72 degrees. But at uh, temperature humidity index is greater than 72, uh, they found uh, off-stream water to be ineffective. While shade distribution was not a significant variable affecting the distribution of cattle and pastures in southern Iowa, uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, we believe that uh, this may have resulted from the large effects of pasture shape and, si shape and size and the fact that the pastures were well shaded in both riparian and, rapar and non-riparian areas. Because cattle will seek that shade, particularly at temperatures of greater than uh, 20 degrees Celsius, uh, shade distribution may still be effective in altering cattle distribution in a pasture. Well, grazing management does affect cattle distribution, does it affect non-point source pollution of pasture streams? Uh, we found no relationship between net annual stream bank erosion and the annual stocking rate uh, of a pasture per foot of pasture stream on streams in 13 pastures in the uh, Rathbun Lake watershed of southern Iowa. Stream bank erosion uh, was even greater in a stream within an ungrazed riparian buffer than in some of the uh, grazed pastures. Thus, uh, it would appear that uh, stream bank erosion was more related to stream hydrology than, uh, and stage of evolution than, than to grazing. As Dr. Ensley will discuss in our next presentation, we found no relationship between grazing and the concentration of fecal coliform uh, fecal coliforms and water samples taken at upstream and downstream sites in these pastures. In fact, we sometimes had higher concentrations in upstream than downstream samples, uh, even when the stream flows were coming from uh, ungrazed land that, uh, above the pastures we were testing. Thus, uh, the coliforms appear to be uh, coming from a number of hosts, which could be wildlife or humans as well as cattle. While these data would uh, seem to imply that grazing cattle have little effect on water pollution, uh, we certainly recognize that uh, uh, grazing uh, management may have an effect on water pollution. In particular, we found that unrestricted access uh, to pasture streams would increase the percentage of land that is bare within 110 feet of a stream and unrestricted stream access or rotational stocking will increase the percentage of land that's covered with manure, thus increasing the risk of nutrient pathogen loading uh, or in precipitation runoff. When conducting rainfall simulations on, on either vegetated or bare areas on uh, banks and pastures with 
continuous stocking with unrestricted stream access, continuous stocking with restricted stream access to those stabilized crossings, or rotational stocking, we found greater runoff, sediment loss, and phosphorus loss from their areas have been vegetated areas regardless of grazing management. Therefore, if we can control the percentage of bare areas by reducing the congregation of cattle near pasture streams through grazing management, we should be able to uh, minimize non-point source pollution. So in conclusion uh, of my presentation, it appears that stream bank erosion is primarily related to stream hydrology and not grazing. Coliform and pathogen loading of pasture streams comes from numerous sources, including wildlife and humans. Improper grazing management may increase the bare ground and manure concentration near pasture streams and uh, thus increase sediment and nutrient loading in precipitation runoff. These risks of grazing may be controlled by the use of stabilized uh, crossings, rotational grazing, or off-stream water. And the greatest risk of non-point source pollution uh, from grazing uh, seems to occur in small or narrow pastures. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to uh, pass the presentation on to Dr. Steve Ensley in our uh, 